some new Modern Horizons cards? Well, you can pre-order them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to CardKingdom.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing, and this week, we are going mad in Legacy, so... Let's talk about our deck, jump into a league, see it in action. All right, so here is our deck, Legacy Madness, featuring some Commander Precon All-Stars and just all kinds of weird jank. I'm really excited to try this deck out. So what is our plan? First, because our deck is trying to Madness cards, which means we got to discard them and we get to cast them at a discount, we have a ton of ways to discard. Careful Study, Faithful Suiting, Stock Our Graveyard, Churn Through Our Deck, Let Us Madness Stuff, Putrid Imp, Lion's Eye Diamond can let us discard our entire hand even if we want to a uh, putrid imp much more control just discard a card whenever we want to for free lion's eye diamond oh this card's interesting in the deck we'll talk more about it in a minute but it makes us discard our entire hand our reward is it gives us three mana so it's a black lotus that makes us discard our hand can do some crazy things though when you see our threat so what are we trying to kill our opponent with we got a few different options two of our big ones hollow and vengevine technically not madness cards but support our plan very well vengevine we can discard to our faithless ootings and then as we're casting our sheep madness stuff or maybe free hollow ones get them back for free with haste so we can flood the board really quickly with hollow one and vengevide our more interesting threats are our madness threats we have basking root walla which if we can madness it is just a free one one making it a great way to trigger vengevide Anj ravager is really weird that's a commander precon card but it's actually perfect for this deck two mana if we madness it it has to attack each turn but when it attacks we have to discard our hand and draw three cards, kind of making it like a repeatable Ox of Agonis, which we also have in the deck, but that's a way that we can discard a bunch of stuff and then use Anj Ravager to refuel. Also, in our deck, discarding cards is often an upside. If we're discarding our Madness stuff, we can just play it. So, tons of synergy with Anj Ravager. Asylum Visitor, if we're empty-handed, or our opponent, we get a Dark Confidant essentially that only costs one life per card. So, those are our main threats. Then we have our Lion's Eye Diamond. So, we mentioned this before, but to really explain what Lion's Eye Diamond is trying to do in this deck it is like this really risky but super explosive play like let's assume we're on turn one we got a couple of venge vines in hand a couple of madness cards the idea is we can led discard our entire hand to get our venge vines in the graveyard and then cast a couple free basking root wallas or maybe a basking root walla plus an Anja's ravager to have two creatures to get the venge vines back so while things can go really wrong if our opponent can deal with our board because we discard our entire hand and we don't have anything else going on it's also a way that we can build this massive board on turn one and hopefully win the game. So that is what LED has tried to do. Otherwise, Street Wraith, Hollow One Trick, Cycling, Reducing the Cost, uh, something like Faithless Looting, plus Street Wraith gives us free Hollow Ones on turn one. Mana Base, pretty typical legacy stuff, Fetch Lands, Dual Lands, Fiery Islet, some basics, Snow-Covered Variety. In the sideboard, Firestorm, Stern Dismissal, give us removal, Ancient Grudge, Fire Effects, and Enchantments, Hate Cards for the Graveyard, and Combo, Firestorm, also sweet because it lets us discard our entire hand as it kills stuff and that is madness for legacy pewter nibs basking root wallas commander precon cards lion's eye diamond to one with nothing our hand on turn one can this ridiculous deck work let's jump into a league play some back legacy and find out thanks for watching i hope you all enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit with a wrap up all right much brew about nothing time we are playing some more legacy this week with uh <laughs> with this crazy madness deck we're playing a four color commander precon <laughs> uh madness in legacy of all places and uh we'll see we'll see how it goes opponent preordains the big question for this hand is going to be, do we Faithless Suiting on turn one? One thing I noticed, I played a couple test games with this deck, and... Ooh, hmm, interesting. I almost think we wait until turn two. I mean, I guess the upside is we do have multiple looting effects. So let's say we loot here. We discard Vengevine and something. Do we cycle Street Wraith? Well, that's Badlands and Faithless Looting. I think because we have so many looting effects, we do loot on turn one. And we have one free discard already. And our opponent could have Teferi's in their deck, and Teferi's really good against our deck. Teferi just shuts down Madness, so we, we gotta do things before before a Teferi potentially comes. Might just discard the LED, we'll see. We'll see what we draw. Wow, okay. Well, I think we are fine with that. 
opponent forces pitching fours. Well, that was the Faithless Looting. We didn't care about that much anyway. Our big turn is hopefully going to be this turn. We draw Fiery Temper. Well, we will cycle a Street Wraith. Hmm. Faithless Looting. Oh, two lads. Well, discard a Ventrine and a Bloodstained Mire. Well, that's awkward. Play a Bloodstained Mire. Go. Oh, boy. Uh, that is not ideal. Opponent. Cracks the land. Volcanic Island. Ponders. Tundra. Ethereal Forger exiling a bunch of cards. I mean, thankfully, we can kill it. I'll crack this, then the deck. We have blue. Let's get... Huh. All right, let's think about this. We already have Badlands. I guess we get Volcanic. I don't think we really need the Taiga at this point. So get a Volcanic, then the deck. Untap. Draw more lands. Well, I think the plan is... Uh, I guess we gotta play a land because of days? All right, play Fiery Islet. Careful study. Really need to hit some creatures. Discard Faithless Looting and Fiery Temper. Madness Fiery Temper at the Forger. Hopefully our opponent's hand does not force blue card again. That would be a blowout. Wow! All right, force blue card part 20. Well, we will play a Putridim. We will play a Lion's Eye Diamond. We will crack the Lion's Eye Diamond for black mana. Madness Asylum Visitor. Get back a Vengevine. Wow. All right, triple force. Go to combat. Yeah, we needed this to die because this is just going to keep giving our opponent back free spells. Well, get him with the Vengevine. Like, they're going to get back the Ponder for free or the Preordain. We do get to draw a card, which is good. It's a land, which is less good. Opponent going to attack, get back a cantrip. Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We drop down to 12. Opponent gets back the preordained. Plays a land. Pre uh, Cracks the land down to 12, looking for an answer. I mean, we're winning on board, but these preordains and ponders are probably going to find our opponent action. One to the top. Expressive iteration. What do they find? Finding another way to preordain. Huh. I almost think we just discard this land to draw another card with Asylum Visitor. Land number four does not seem like it does anything. All right, yeah, uh, discard the land. Untap. Big draws. Asylum Visitor, extra draw. Oh my god, two more lands. Wow, that's a lot of lands. Um, hmm. Play the land. Crack the land. Get a Taiga. Faithless looting. Discard Fiery Temper. And land. Is the third time the charm. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's actually just try to kill our opponent. Down to nine. Go attacking. I'm seeing nine on the battlefield. Oh, okay. Beating the Force of Wills, and I think that means our opponent might be dead. Swing, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That looks like lethal to me. Oh, all right. All right, all right, all right. That is the power of the madness. Oh, that was close. That was super close. What do we have that's good against our opponent's deck? That is the question. This is where uh, where not really playing a, a ton of legacy becomes tricky, because the question is, like, should we be bringing in Graveyard Hate? I guess maybe Firestorm's okay? Actually, Stern Dismissal seems great. Let's bring in Stern Dismissal. Going down, what? So our opponent's going to have a bunch of Lightning Bolts, presumably. Maybe we just trim a bit? Hmm. Like, let's go down one LED... One careful study, one ox? Let's try it like that. All right. Well, Stern Dismissal, good answer, I think, to Ethereal Forger in specific. Like, if our opponent delves away a bunch of stuff to get it into play and then we bounce it, it's probably going to be hard for them to replay it. Also, I guess, can stop, like, a Flip Delver or something. We'll see. We'll see how much Graveyard Hate our opponent has, potentially. Huh. Well, okay, this hand gives us a, a potential turn one hollow one, so I guess we keep it. Volcanic Island. Opponent passes. Well, Mountain. And Faithless Looting. All right. Well, that is tough. Opponent dazes. Oh, going to hit a uh, a land that makes other colors of mana. We're going to have a good turn with Basking Root while a hollow one, but... Opponent. Volcanic Island. Again. Passes. Land, please. Vengevine. All right. Extracts Faithless Looting. I guess that slightly increases our chances of drawing a land. Like, we're a land away, well, a land and resolving our spells away 
from having a great turn. We can careful study, discard this, discard this, cast this, cast this, get back Vegemite. Like, that would be a great turn, but we need the land. I think we got to cycle for it and hope. All right. No. More Venge Vines. Pass the turn. Wow. Oh! 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 Opponent attempts. So close to the dream, and yet so far away. Opponent. Another land. Passes. Well, there's the land. Oh, they probably have a counter. Well, Scalding Tarn. Also of note, we can't get a land that lets us Putrid Imp and Careful Study, which is awkward. That might be a deck building oversight. I don't crack this. Get a bad lands. I mean, if Putrid Imp resolves, this is absurd. Putrid Imp. Cast the days. Well, we will pay for the days. You got another one? Triple days. All right, not paying for that one. Pass the turn. Oh. Oh, no. Opponent attacks. I feel like our deck should be good against what our opponent's doing, but it has not played out that way this game with the triple days. There's the Forager. Do we draw land? Yes. All right, let's try this again. Will it finally work? Bloodstain Mire. Crack Bloodstain Mire. Get a Volcanic Island. Careful study. Huh. So we can't do everything. Discard Vengevine. Fiery Temper. We're going to have to keep waiting. Fiery Temper the Forager. Hollow one. Go. All right. Oh, not as explosive as we want, but that's not a horrible turn. Forager dealt with. Hollow one on the battlefield. We're not... S we need another looting effect. Losing our faithless lootings is hurting. I guess... <laughs> I guess a gr another land lets us just hard cast Rootwalla and Ravager and get back Avengevine. Tundra for our opponent. Monastery Mentor. Well, Cycle Street Wraith. Hmm... I think we gotta wait one more turn. Play Scalding Tard. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent takes it. Fiery Temper the Mentor. Hope for no force of will. Pass the turn. Opponent brainstorms. All right, I think this is our big turn. Hopefully. Flooded Strad. Cracks it. Shuffles away. Tundra. Preordain. Well, we pass the first two tests to keep the threats off the battlefield. Both to the bottom. Ponder. Well, a looting effect would be the best. A way to discard cards. LED would be insane. Putrid Imp would be insane. If we can get the second Vengevine in the graveyard, oh my god, it's so good. But even without that, it's still pretty good. So crack this. Get a green source, finally. Uh, Taiga. Untap. Islet. So we will play the land. Play Basking Rootwalla. The old-fashioned way. Play a Ravager. Also the old-fashioned way. Get a Vengevine. Combat hits ya for a bunch. Opponent down to five. They need like another mentor in spells or something? They are in a, in a sketchy spot. Our board is full. Our board is full of things. Opponent gets a land. Expressive iteration. Desperation. Opponent digging for anything to not be dead to our commander precon cards. <laughs> and they do not find it. And oh, well. That was not as explosive as it could have been. If our opponent did not have the disruption, we would have been doing this way quicker and way more explosively, but still kind of a impressive janky performance for a, <laughs> for our Legacy Madness deck. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are going mad in, <laughs> going mad in, uh, in Legacy and, huh. This hand's kind of funny. It's also incredibly risky. So what we could do with this hand is play Lion's Eye Diamond, crack Lion's Eye Diamond, play, also play the land, play Ravager, Basking Root Walla, Fiery Temper. You know what? I think we're going to go for it. <laughs> and then Ravager refills our hand. The risk is if the Ravager dies, things get, uh, get pretty sketchy. Well, we will play Snow Covered Island. We will play Lion's Eye Diamond. We will play Lion's Eye Diamond. We will crack Lion's Eye Diamond for red. We will Ravager. <laughs> All right, that's what we got on turn one. Is it enough? Play the Ravager. Oh! Oh, boy. Oh, Court of Punning. Okay. Well, the answer is pretty clearly no. Huh. Well, we tried. <laughs> we cast our entire hand. And, uh, got, I would say, a smidge punished. 
Well, get in with the basking root wall, uh. Hit ya. Court of Cunning, what is going on? What is going on? Oh, that was, that was the force of will blowout. Oh my god, in it. What in the world? Okay. Tropical Island. Tarmogoyf. Well, I think we might just straight up be done. Yeah. Well, pass the turn. Oh. If our opponent did not have that force of will, we would have been in wonderful shape. But they did. Land. Goyf. Attack. Well, I guess that's a problem with going all in like that. Opponent. More Goyfs. Looting. And... Yeah, all right. Sure. <laughs> well, that was quick, at least. Uh, opponents playing Tarmogoyfs, eh? Some sort of Saltai... Saltai, I don't even know. Is Court of Cunning actually a card people play? Apparently. So it's just kind of like Saltai stuff, I guess? Saltai magic cards? Hmm. Well, that force was a blowout. I don't even know how much we change, if anything. Like, I assume our opponent's just playing... Like, salt-eye mid-range value stuff. I don't think we want ley line. Our graveyard's gonna grow the goyf anyway. Firestorm, maybe? Stern Dismissal? Yeah, I think we just run it back. <laughs> All right. Can we get blown out by Force of Will again? Huh. This is a hand that cannot fill the graveyard. We can, like, cast Basking Root Wallace? I guess we mulligan. Oh, so close, so close. Oh, we will keep. We will put Asylum Visitor to the bottom. We will... Tropical Island. Crack it. Get a Volcanic Island. Faithless Looting. Discard a couple... Of wow, we are so close to the dream. Discard two Vengevides. Pass the turn. Oh, opponent. Snow-Covered Island. Ponders. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. No Force of Wills. Show us a... Ooh, Street Wraith works. Cycle Street Wraith. Um, play the land. Play Careful Study. Oh, Gosh, dang it! Oh my goodness! Oh, oh, the ridiculous blowouts never end. Never, ever, ever. Uh, so we will play a land. We will flashback a faithless looting. Oh, well, we need to hit a street wraith, I guess. Discard, discard. We will not madness. We do not have the ability to madness. Pass the turn. Oh, we are going to have double hollow one, double veg vine. But our opponent hit the force again. Well, opponent gets and hits us. Maybe this deck is pretty susceptible to force of will. Like, force of will has just straight up, straight up won our opponent this this game, this match. Ensnaring bridge. Wonderful. Hey, now we draw things that matter. Careful study. Discard, discard. Yeah, I mean, it's just we can't... We don't have an answer to this, right? Yeah, all right, fair enough. Huh. Well, that was... That was a very frustrating match. I have absolutely no idea what our opponent's deck is trying to do. Like, I... I... I don't know. Well, that's legacy for you. Who knows what crazy things you will see. Some people are uh, play aggro with ensnaring bridges in their deck. You never know. You never know what you will find. Uh, but that was, uh, that was frustrating. Mm. Well, maybe next time our spells will resolve. Oh, that was just brutal. Like, you expect Force Will at Legacy, but we just had, like, such a sweet setup. Like, we were actually going to see our deck go off, but... Oh, two games in a row. Force of Will off the top. And then, uh... And then this random ensnaring bridge. But, no, well, all right. On to the next. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are madnessing in Legacy, and... We'll keep this. I mean, could use another draw for this hollow one. I'm, oh no, Storm. Ugh, I think Storm is, uh, Storm and other very unfair decks are, are, we're, oh my goodness. Oh, this is turn one, turn one win. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent reveals their deck. So this is Legacy Oops All Spells, which is, uh, way better than the other versions. This will be interesting. So opponent, turn one win on the play. That's one thing I've noticed about this deck is, uh, yeah, Thus is Oracle with Dread Return, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, our opponent doesn't even know we're playing, so I guess that's some advantage. Leyline in. Mind Break Trap in. We need answers. We will go down. Fiery Temper seems real bad. We can probably trim, like, an Ox? A... And maybe Asylum Visitors? Yeah, let's go down Asylum Visitors. I mean, so I feel like, actually... Maybe we got on an LED. So I feel like our challenge in this game is 
answering our opponent. Like, we gotta have an answer. This hand does not have an answer. We will mulligan. So we need to find Leyline or, oh boy. Well, we're gonna keep mulligan in. This we will keep. This hand is absolutely horrible as far as winning the game, but it does have two ley lines. Well, all right. <laughs> we'll see if our opponent has an answer to two ley lines. So we're not gonna be doing anything for a while by the looks, but hopefully we won't be dying for a while. Under crypt, opponent passes. I'll play the land, pass the turn. Next turn we might try to do something. If we get up to three mana, then we can at least madness some stuff. Opponent plays a tap land, passing. We would like to get a clock going so we can kill our opponent before they draw answers. We need a threat. Well, all right. Let's faithless looting. Discard and discard. We get a free rat, a uh, free root walla. Crack this. Get a taiga and hollow one. All right. Well, those are threats. Hopefully, they're fast enough to kill our opponent before they answer our ley lines. Dark Ritual, the uh, Cabal Ritual. I mean, I guess they could also, like, have the Belcher backup plan or something. Spirit Guide. Well, are we just going to get Belchered? That's depressing. Okay, cast the Spirit Guide. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Well, go to combat. Do some attacking. Now we're not especially worried about our opponent comboing off. They can double block the hollow one. They're gonna double block, interesting. Well, we will kill the Undercity Informer. Hit our opponent past the turn. One more land for the for a Ravager would be super sweet. Well, apparently, our opponent's deck uh, not super good at beating ley lines. <laughs> they spent a bunch of rituals to play a 2-3 two, two, and a 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> opponent going to surgically extract our Faithless Looting. I'm guessing this is our opponent, like, looking at our deck and then conceding, but we'll see. This will let our opponent know that we have Mind Break Trap. Well, we have the answer. In this case, we'll see if we can do it again. <laughs> oh, Legacy. Yeah. So, Faithless Looting's down. Opponent gets a good look at our deck, and... Wow, they're not giving up. Hits us. I don't go to combat. Attack you. Yeah, I guess we pass... The mana in this deck can be a little awkward sometimes. Opponent passes. Ooh, that's that's not bad. All right, play the Badlands. Go to combat. Attack. That should do it. This Putrid Imp, I think, will seal the deal. Opponent. Wow, no attack, no block. We'll play Putrid Imp. Pass the turn. Okay. Well, a win's a win. Opponent passing. Right, we'll discard a Ravager. Madness it. I mean, I think this is literally our game plan. Mulliganing into one of those cards. An opponent scoops it up. Huh. Well, run it back and try to do that again. <laughs> Mulligan into an answer or multiple answers. So really, we cannot keep a hand without Mind Break Trap or Ley Line. Preferably, two of those cards is even better for a little extra protection. But no matter how good our hand is, I don't think we can keep it unless we have a hate card. Because our deck, even with our best draws, what's our best draw is like... A couple of Hollow Ones and Venge Vines on turn one, which would be insane and would take a lot of things to go exactly right. But uh, even if we did have that absurd nut draw, not necessarily fast enough to beat our opponent's deck if they have a reasonable draw. All right. Oh, hmm. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Opponent's keeping their hand. Oh. So the good news is we got a Mind Break Trap. The bad news is this hand doesn't do much else at the moment. But we will keep. So our opponent probably knows we have Mind Break Trap. We'll see if they can play around it. Opponent, untapped. And passes. You know, play Taiga. And a Basking Root Walla. <laughs> Just the way Garfield intended Legacy to be played. Cast in a 1-1 one, one for 1. <laughs> opponent, passes. Ooh, Vengevine. Oh, this is actually sweet. So we get to play an island. We get to play Careful Study. Discard Vengevine and Basking Rootwalla. Madness the Rootwalla. Hollow One. Vengevine. Do you have Surgical? Apparently not. Go to combat. Hit ya. I mean, this is a clock. Pwn it. Takes five. Down to twelve. I think this means we're presenting lethal next turn with a root wall of pump. Opponent untaps. They got to go for it this turn. Are we going to beat an unfair deck? Are we going to beat an unfair deck with our masking root wallets? 
I think we hard cast a masking root wall, uh, and I think that might lead to victory. Opponent. They gotta go for it. Nature's claims a hollow one. Okay. That does buy our opponent time. Well, okay. Opponent sending the message, scooping it up. They that actually worked out perfectly. Our opponent kept a hand presumably to be able to beat a ley line. We were on the Mindberry trap plan and uh in our <laughs> In her basket root walla beat down. Pay it off. Alright, sweet, 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 sweet. Alright, against the odds time. We are going bad in legacy, and well we'll keep this. This hand offers a turn one hollow one and a basking root walla, which hopefully that's good enough. We'll see what our opponent's up to. So, our plan is cycle street wraith. I guess force of wheel gets us a bit. Ooh, 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 even better. Uh no counters, please. Careful study. Discard. This all oh, this is this is the kind of draw we dream about. Basking root walla comes into play. Hollow one for free. Vengevine. Alright, not a bad turn one. Not a bad turn one. Even in legacy. An opponent! Turn one kill! Scoops it up. Uh downside is we don't know what our opponent's doing. <laughs> but that is the best draw we've had so far. Turn one! Turn one! Hollow one vengevine, basking root walla reasonable reasonably effective um hmm all right much uh yeah i mean i guess we just run it back we have no idea what our opponent's playing so probably no reason to sideboard Ooh, wow this hand's close discard vengevine basking root walla yeah i think we got a mulligan though if we had one more creature <laughs> uh okay we'll put a root walla to the bottom well Come on, Vengevines. If we can draw into Vengevines off this Faithless Looting, it's actually pretty sweet. Vengevine? Ravager. Hmm. So now the question is, do we cast Faithless Looting or do we wait? If we wait, I guess we're waiting two turns? I think we wait a turn. Let's play Bloodstained Mire, pass the turn. Waiting a turn turns on Hollow Ones, too. And the Basking Root Wallows are not getting in for that much damage, in all honesty. Not a big fan of New Border Islands, but... Oh, Lorwyn Islands are so good. Opponent. Ooh, playing Merfolk. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. Well, I guess we thin the deck. Getting a Taiga. Untap. Well, there's a Hollow One, so we will um play the land. Just in case. Faithless Looting. Ooh! Not good. Not good, not good. Okay. The weirdest thing about this deck, <laughs> by far is that getting our faithless lootings or careful studies hit by force of will is like devastating that was uh our other laws that is exactly how it happened because uh we just we can't really do anything unless we get those looting effects going opponent hits us oh and a wasteland all right uh looking bad looking real bad we draw scalding tarn well we will play it and i guess we pass the turn I don't think there's any point just running out of basket root while uh Brineborn cutthroat. Huh. Is this like Flash Merfolk? What is going on? Cavern of Souls. Names Merfolk. And I'm assuming a lord. Yeah. Oh, well. We need a really good draw and we need it right this second, or we are or we are dead. About it. And even if we get a good draw, we might be dead. Well, we're gonna crack the lands. Taiga. Uh we can't get a taiga. We will get a this is even more awkward. We can't get an island, can we? I'll get a Badlands. Maybe we crack one and wait. If we draw a careful study, we might have to get an island, but then can we win anyway? Oh, all right. <laughs> I think this actually just kills us, though. So we gotta get an island, which turns on Island Walk. We careful study. Eh, all right, that's not gonna do anything. Sure. <laughs> well, once again, we have learned that this deck, it doesn't seem like Force of Will should be good against it. However, Force of Will's really good against it. <laughs> we have seen that multiple times now that Force of Will just like sort of wrecks us. All right, the good news is we are going to be on the play. This, if there was ever a matchup for Firestorm to be good, it's probably this one. We'll go down one LED, run it like that. All right, all right. Can we dodge the Force of Will? Can we get a good start? I think we need a pretty fast start or a bunch of removal, one or the other, or eventually merfolk lords and island walk will just overwhelm us so strange when i look at this deck list i think oh this is very force of will proof but uh in practice it has not worked out that way i guess i'm honestly surprised that so many 
of our opponents have been so aggressive with countering the lootings or careful studies. But it's definitely correct, and it's definitely been working out for them. All right, we get to play first. Huh. You know what? I think we can keep this. It's definitely land heavy, but Putrid Imp is good. We have a removal spell to kill a lord, and we've gotten most of our lands out of the way, so. <laughs> uh, land and Putrid Imp. Pass the turn. Opponent. Island. And Ethervile. Come on, action. Street Wraith. Hmm. Is it even worth cycling? Are we casting Faithless Looting? We might have to just to thin the deck. All right, Scalding Tarn, crack it. Get a snow-covered mountain. Cycle Street Wraith. Actually, maybe we looting first and then decide. Let's loot it. Mm, all right, not super helpful. Um, discard and discard. So we'd have to hit exactly hollow one. All right, go to combat, attack. Hit ya. Pass the turn. Well, we got rid of a couple of cards that we didn't really want. We can use this Putrid Imp to Madness, which is nice. So far, we've played around Wasteland, which is also helpful. Opponent passing. Well, we will untap. We draw land. I'm gonna play the Islet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh. All right, no attacks. Opponent. Brine Born Cutthroat. Okay. Untaps. I think we're gonna try to save the Fiery Temper for a Lord if we can. Opponent goes attacking. Here comes a Lord. Well, we will discard Fiery Temper. Snipe the Lord, hopefully. Opponent lets it go. I actually think we block here. Actually, let's Ravager. It'd be really nice if this resolved, but I'm skeptical. We'll see. Ravager, please? Okay, resolves. Oh. Oh. The question is, how do we block? I guess we just... Oh, I guess we don't block. What, did we put it into play too late? Huh. Okay, no blocks. We untap. We play Badlands. We cycle Street Wraith. We go to combat. Opponent. Oh, Blue Elemental Blast. That's actually super bad for us. All right. Uh, well, hit you for two. Oh, yeah, that's a, that is a blowout. Well, we will Faithless Looting since we have infinite lands. Fluster Storm. All right. Opponents had a lot of interaction. Hmm. I wonder if that missed block is going to come back to haunt us. I mean, I guess no, because of Blue Elemental Blast. So, like, even if we block, they could have just Blue Elemental Blasted, and we would have saved a couple points of damage, but we still would have lost our stuff. Ugh. Yeah, that's a blowout. We were really counting on that Ravager to, to be able to save us, but, uh, instead... <laughs> we're just kind of flooding out here. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Yeah, counter's so good against us. Awkwardly. Oddly. Strangely. Uh, opponent. Trying to figure out how to resolve a fluster storm. All right. Yeah. So, uh, opponent gets to counter our stuff. Grows the cutthroat. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Well, opponent untaps. Two cards in hand. Both of them action, I think, because they miss their land drop. Opponent goes to combat, gets in, hits us, down to 10, not a lot of life. Opponent passes, we draw, oh, oh, an unbelievably high amount of lands. Uh, well, sack the eyelet. Oh, hmm, Bloodstain Mire, go to combat attack. Yeah, I think we're gonna die. Well, yeah, pass the turn. Yeah, we've just flooded out severely this game. And, uh, again, gotten wrecked by counter spells. Opponent. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is... That is lethal. Fair enough. Huh. Well, interesting. Yeah, our deck, uh, did not... I mean, really, the problem was, again, Faithless Sweden getting encountered. That has been a... That has been a theme. Well, one more to go. Can we get the winning record? Let's, uh, let's find out. All right. Much brew about, like, <laughs> legacy time. <laughs> Much brew about nothing. Playing legacy... Trying to... Oh, so close, so close. We're going to keep this. I think we are going to Faithless Looting on turn one. We are trying to uh, to Madness our way through this format. So, Scalding Tarn. Crack it. Get a Snow-Covered Mountain? Yeah, get a Snow-Covered Mountain. Faithless Looting. Discard Vengevine. Ooh, that's actually very interesting. This lets us go for it turn one, right? Well, Discard Vengevine and... Asylum Visitor. No madnessing. 
The question is, does LED resolve? If LED resolves, we get the turn one Vengevine and the Ravager and a Basking Rootwalla and probably are good. Well, cycle Street Wraith, just in case. Oh, I feel like our opponent might have something. Well, play LED. Crack LED for red. Yeah, I mean, we're going for it. Ravager, madness it. Oh, they have the force after all that. Oh, the blowouts continue. Well, we get a Vengevine. We get a Rootwalla. But our hand is as empty as a hand can be. Hit you down to 15 past the turn. Well, we'll see. I mean, oh, I really want that Ravager to refill our hand. Now we're just all in on this Vengevine. If our opponent untaps and goes like land swords or something, then it's going to be very hard for us to rebuild a opponent. Scalding Tarn. Passes. Fiery Tempere. 80 cards and they still had the force. Go attacking. Opponent. Takes it down to 10. We pass the turn. Opponent plays a Misty Rainforest. Passes. We go to combat. We attack. Will it be enough? Oh, they found an answer. Opponent cracks. Tropical Island. Cracks. Underground Sea. Oh, no. A Drown in the Lock. Okay. Oh, it's slipping away. It's slipping away. Well, opponent goes to seven. However, we have no clock anymore. Grove of the Burn Willows for our opponent. Wither Bloom Apprentice to gain some life. Another LED would actually be probably our best draw. Fiery Temper that we can't cast. Well, pass the turn. Oh. <laughs> oh, the blowouts. The blowouts, the blowouts. Huh. Well, I will say, if this deck just loses to Force of Will, it kind of loses some of its appeal, because if you're just going to lose to Force of Will, you could be playing like that Oops All Spell deck that we that we played against earlier, that wins on turn one. When our deck wins on, like, turn two or turn three, <laughs> 80 cards, no problem for our opponent. Sure. <laughs> oh, what a... What a strange, strange, strange world. Yeah? Huh. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's try it again. Maybe because our opponent's playing an 80-card deck, they will not have Force of Will in hand this game. I'm kind of amazed by how consistent Yarian decks are. Like, it actually blows my mind that people are playing essentially like Splinter Twin-style two-card combos. They don't have redundant pieces. Like, Chain of Smog is the only card that does what it does. And... And playing them in 80 card decks and having it work, like, that just, it, blow, it blows my mind that that's a thing. But, uh, apparently it is. Huh. Well, one more shot. We gotta win two in a row to get the winning record. We'll play first. What's our hand look like? Come on, deck. Well, I mean, I guess we keep it and play some Ravagers. See what happens. Uh, whoa, why are we skipping our main phase? That's awkward. All right, Snow-Covered Swamp. Putrid Imp. <laughs> Hey, guess what? <laughs> they got it. <laughs> oh, opponent, polluted delta, passes. We draw a hollow one. Well, play a bloodstained mire past the turn. Oh, opponent, undaps, plays a volcanic island. Well, we will thin our deck. We do have a lot of lands, way more than we could ever want. Let me draw a lion's eye diamond. Well, play lion's eye diamond. Play Bloodstain Mire. Pass the turn. Well, we can play two Ravagers. Grove of the Burn Willows. Opponent's passing. Well, let's see how many answers they have. Opponent cracks. Bayou plays an Uro. Okay. Gains a bunch of life. Gets another land. Well, crack Bloodstain Mire. Get a Taiga. Cycle Hollow One. Cycle Street Wraith. All right. Well, okay. Um, crack this for red. Discard our hand. Do a bit of madnessing. Basking Rootwalla for free. No Vengevines in the graveyard, sadly, but... So we get a Rootwalla. We madness Anja's Ravager. All right. Please resolve. <laughs> My plan was to play the Force, uh, the Faithless Hooding with the new art, because I know it tilts a lot of people, but it maybe that's hurting us, and maybe it is getting our <laughs> Faithless Hooding countered out of spite because people don't like the new art. So maybe that was a... A tactical error. Well, that's what we got. 
All right, opponent does have, of course, even more force of wills. We untap. We draw. Go to combat. We swing at you. We discard. We draw some cards. We madness a root walla. Well, I guess we pump a root walla. Hit our opponent for a bit. Play the land. Play a lion's eye diamond. Pass the turn. Do they get back an Uro, though? If they do, that's super bad. Oh, so many force of wills. I wonder if... Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Opponent. Cling to dust to draw a card. That lets our opponent get back Uro. Oh, sweet mother. Draw it in the lock. Opponent passes. We draw... An Asylum Visitor. Well, we'll go to combat. We will attack and attack. We will pump. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. But there's an Uro. And I'm not sure there's a way we can beat this Uro and the life that it offers. Yeah, that Drown in the Lock was, was rough. Opponent. Going to get back Uro. Gains a bunch of life. Puts a land into play. Puts another land into play. Well... We will crack this for black mana. Madness Asylum Visitor. We don't have an answer for this, though. Our answer is just to be fast enough. No! Oh my goodness. Well, that is a fitting end to this deck in this league. 80 card deck, 3 Force of Wills for the win. Basky Ruwala, that's not going to cut it. There is no way out. Oh. All right, pass the turn. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that actually is a perfect ad because I think that the way this match went perfectly sums up our experience with the deck. The deck does really cool things. And I guess maybe this is just our wrap up right now. The deck does cool things and it can do really cute explosive things. And it's very different than any other deck that you're going to see trying to compete in Legacy. But, uh, <laughs> fair enough. But, uh, but. Force of Will absolutely destroys it. Absolutely destroys it, which is very counterintuitive. You would not think that a deck that is madnessing and playing things for free would get completely destroyed by Force of Will. Uh, normally, things like Fengevine and Hollow One and Oxvagonis are great against Force of Will, but that actually was not the case with this deck. With this deck, what happened is... We usually have hands where we have, like, a Faithless Looting, and we're trying to use that Faithless Looting to, like, get our Venge Vines and our Hollow Woods into play and, like, start doing their thing. A single Force of Will on the Faithless Looting a lot of times leaves us with a hand that's, like, Hollow and Venge Vine, Anjay's Ravager, and we just don't do anything for a bunch of turns. And we got hit by a mind-blowing number of Force of Wills. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I mean, I like this deck, and I... Very much like the Legacy format, but uh, I feel like this deck actually, <laughs> I mean, it's janky, it's weird, I think you could even consider it kind of like an Against Odds deck in Legacy to some extent, but when it comes down to it, it's a deck that apparently just can't beat Force of Will very effectively, and uh, it doesn't win that quickly. I think there's decks that don't beat Force of Will, but they win on like turn one. If your opponent doesn't have a Force of Will, our deck is in this kind of awkward spot where apparently we don't beat Force of Will, and when things go well, we're like doing cute things and winning on turn three or turn four. Maybe with an absolute dream draw, we could win on turn two, but that would be like... If you could draw your perfect seven opening hand of like two Venge Vines, two Hollow Woods, a Street Wraith, uh, and a land in a Faithless Looting, which is like one in billions or millions that you'll actually have that exact hand. So, uh, so I don't know. I mean, the deck is sweet, and I think I'm glad that we got to play it, but overall, it was kind of a frustrating league because it felt like we had a lot of... It was a double frustrating league in a lot of ways because we had a lot of hands where you could see our deck's plan in action. We had the hands where it's like, all right, two Venge Vides, the Hollow Woods. We're going to do something really cool, and we have it set up, and we cast the Faithful Suiting or the Careful Study, and our opponent Force of Wills, and then it all falls apart. So it's kind of like... Uh, I don't know, my, my, my grandmother, she likes scratch-off lottery tickets. And so every once in a while, when I go visit my grandmother, I'll, I'll get her a scratch-off lottery ticket. And one thing I've realized about scratch-off lottery tickets is 
they set it up so it feels like you're going to win. Even if you're a 0% chance to win, which, I mean, you always lose if you play lottery tickets. Like, that's uh, and how the whole system works. But it sets it up so it feels like, as you're getting to the end of the lottery ticket, that you got a chance. And if you can only get the right letter for your crossword puzzle or whatever, you're going to win a ton of money. So it, And then it feels worse when you don't win because you felt like it was so close. That was a feeling I got with a lot of games with this deck, where you could see these amazing explosive plays that we had sitting there about to go off and do something absolutely spectacular but then it would get force willed and it would all fall apart and we wouldn't do anything for the rest of the game so i think that aspect of it made it especially disappointing just because you could see the cool thing about to happen only to have dreams crushed so i don't know i think the next unique it's definitely interesting. It can do pretty explosive, fun things. It plays a lot of weird cards that you don't play in any other Legacy deck. Like, the whole structure of this deck is incredibly unique. Uh, would have been nice if we could have picked up another win and got a three or two. We finished with a two and three, which is fine. But if you look back at our matches, every single loss, every single one, I don't think there's any exceptions, was purely the result of getting an enabler hit by, by Force of Will. Like, that was... 100% it. Uh, opponent Force of Willing, our Faithful Suiting, our Careful Study, our Putrid Imp, and then our deck not being able to recover. So that's Legacy Madness. I guess maybe the name's even fitting because I felt like it was driving me a little bit mad with how close it was to doing the awesome things throughout the game. That's better than much of Brew for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed some more Legacy. I'm sure it'll be back. Maybe next time we'll play a deck that either wins on turn one or dodges Force of Will or doesn't care about Force of Will. Maybe we'll even play Force of Will. We haven't really been playing many Force of Will decks since we started this little Legacy excursion. And maybe it's our turn to have the free counter spell. So that's been our bunch of brew for this week. Legacy Madness. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.